Hello, I'm Donald Leggett, and welcome to the latest London South East CEO interview. I am joined today by Roger Brown, CEO at Seplat Petroleum, Nigeria's largest independent oil and gas producer. Seplat are listed on the London May market and recently announced Q3 results. Welcome, Roger. Thank you. Good. Hi there. I'm presuming you've been having a, a pretty busy time, Roger. It's, yeah, it's not been without its challenges, um, but we uh, we're staying safe. And we, we all learn to live with this uh, pandemic I think we're all dealing with and oil price and US elections, you name it. So it's, it's difficult times at the minute for anyone in, in any company and not least um, in the energy company, in the energy world. But we're robust, we're used to it and we, uh, we fight on. Donald. It certainly has been, has been tricky times in uh, oil and gas companies. Now, some of the majors, some of the oil majors are embracing the global transition to cleaner forms of energy. How has Seplat performed in those first nine months? Yes, I mean, look, for, for, for us, um, you know, Q2 was, was the worst for us in terms of uh, oil price um, impact. And in Q3, we had some issues uh, with OPEC cuts were starting to come in with some of our assets. Um, but we fought our way through it. Um, we turned a nine month uh, set of results, which I think are, shows resilience of the company and robustness of it. You know, we, we turn around just slightly less than $400 million. Um, we're generating $200 million of cash, $200 million of EBITDA. So the business is, is cash positive. It's generating uh, revenues and profits for, the, for the, uh, the, the shareholders going forward and everything else. And we've got, you know, things in place. We've got hedging, you know, we're anything to sort of counterbalance the issues we have in these troubling times. And, and then we're looking out further into 2021, starting to get ready for our drilling programs next year, um, both oil and gas, um, as we start to drive through this. Hopefully, hopefully this doesn't go on forever. Hopefully into maybe to the end of Q area H1 next year, we start to see some recovery back into the markets and, and SEPLIT will be there and we'll, we'll continue to produce energy for Nigeria, both oil and gas. Um, um, as we do, as we've done through every every tough time we've had, um, and this time is no different. And tell us about the new energy unit, Roger. Is that core to Saplat's uh, energy transition strategy going forward? Yeah, we've we've been in gas um, processing um, for quite some time, and that really is a carbon saving um, today. So it's not we're not saying we're thinking about doing it in the future. We are actively reducing carbon today, and I. And I think that that is a real good value for um, Sepla is bringing to the, the Nigerian uh, government and the population. And um, what we then looked at and said, well, how do we then start to go down further down this track of of, of gas development? Um, and we are looking at LPG, uh, liquid liquid petroleum gas um, on all of our gas plants, um, and that can be utilised in the local market. We're looking at compressed natural gas or CNG. And we're looking down further down the value chain, um, potentially into um, supplying smaller scale, probably not retail, but certainly smaller scale wholesale um, customers. And then through through that, um, then saying, well, look, what what does renewable energy mean for Nigeria uh, into the future? And it's it's got huge potential, particularly in solar. It's it's, it's got lots of uh, obviously sun all, all year round here. Um, it's, that would be a great renewable fuel source for the com country. And, and what we really want to do is we need to get the grid system up to a level. We're having more gas going through it. And then that then grid will then allow on-grid uh, um, solar power rather than off-grid small scale. So that's something that we're looking at. Um, it probably means at some point, um, you know, consideration, do we go into the power sector or not? And that's something we're looking at. Um, but it's part of an overall um, energy mix. Um, as we move from uh, you know, sort of higher uh, hydrocarbons, high, higher carbon hydrocarbons to uh, lower carbon gas and then into renewables. What we decided to do then is we, we, we looked at it very carefully and we said, look, the skill set for renewable energy, um, which predominantly is going to be power really, is very different skill set from, from upstream oil and gas. And so we created a new energy group um, where we're bringing the necessary skills to, to actually then uh, drive that advancement. So we're not coming out yet, Donald, in, in terms of what we're doing, 
other than setting up that new unit. But but we put them on a fast track to really lay out what the future of energy transition is going to be for the company. That makes a lot of sense. Um, which takes us to what can investors expect from Setlat in the coming months? Uh, what's your news flow going to be like? Yeah, so, so for us, a couple of the projects, obviously the Anno project we're looking at, and, and, and one of the news flow is going to be financial close on that and on the debt side. Um, we're looking to do the Mookby de Scrabble's pipeline, and that's one area that's taken a lot longer than we expected, purely because we don't control it. It's not a Setlat project. Um, and we don't own the pipeline, but we're looking to really try and fast track. We put, in terms of our planning, a realistic um, each two next year on it, but we really are trying to push it earlier than that and get it up and running. We're getting a liquid treatment um, upgrades doing at the minute, and then obviously the drilling campaign. Uh, we're looking at that, and, and we have a number of exploration wells that we are still doing a lot of peer review on. Um, but we really want to start to bed in exploration, um, at least one exploration well a year, every year going forward. And there are quite a number of good ones in the Western assets, Eastern assets. And there's a particularly nice one at um, OML 40, which we obviously bought from, from Eland. We bought, we bought Eland. Um, and there's a, the Amobi prospect there, which looks pretty good. Um, anyway, but we, we've got a bit more work to do before we launch that. But there's a number of catalysts. The other thing is really is getting efficiencies in. Um, so we're looking at, at um, our drilling uh, techniques and see if we can bring in uh, more uh, refined drilling techniques, more efficiency in that. Um, and we're looking at other sort of structural changes in the business to get the business ready for a low oil price environment. Of 40, who knows what they're going to be? $40 oil at the minute, hopefully it gets to 50, but we have to prepare for a $40 oil um, into next year. Okay. Uh, when we spoke uh, three months ago, you were about to become CEO, uh, and now you are the main man. So tell us what the first months in the job have been like, and what sort of tweaks and changes have you been making? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit different stepping up from CFO to CEO. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a different role. Um, it's been good. I mean, it's, it's been a lot of work uh, working with the teams, um, because obviously what we're trying to do, despite and the problems we have externally, um, is really trying to get the company ready. So we've made some top team moves and, and not nothing radical, but just moving people around um, the top team in the organization. And we're about to go bring in uh, change management consultants and working with teams here to really realign the rest of the business. We created a new energy unit um, and we're really looking at sort of what efficiencies we need to bring in place. So the team's been very reactive, um, really supportive. Um, I think you know, people are buying into it. We got a lot of really good, smart people um, that and I am 100% confident that can rise up and de deliver the growth. Um, and beyond getting our um, house more efficient and our costs down even further, um, you know, there will be more divestments coming up. There will be more um, inorganic growth. And I know, I know we've got the team to be able to handle that. Um, we're just making some tweaks now and making some tune-ups um, to get ready for the future. So it's so far so good, pretty positive. It's a lot of hard work. It's certainly not five days a week. It's, it's certainly more than that. But um, I'm excited about the future for sure. But very enjoyable nonetheless. Yes, yes, it is indeed. Okay, well, there we go. That was Roger Brown, CEO at Setplant. Uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us from Lagos today. Uh, for more interviews like this one, please do subscribe to the London Southeast YouTube channel Thank you very much indeed for watching and do stay safe.